I'd like to introduce you to Herman Eberich, a local keyboard player born and raised in San Francisco. So Herman, where were you in the 60s? Where was I? Exactly five blocks that way after high school. Which is that way? The panhandle of <laughs> San Francisco. Came there every weekend and enjoyed myself through the uh, sounds and uh, sights of uh, the six, 1965. That's when I, I graduated from high school. Mm -hmm. and it was a great time. I wish time froze almost at that time. Hey, tell us a little more about yourself. Sure. Well, born and raised in San Francisco, California. I used to, when I got out of high school, I went to the California Hall, which was, had a lot of dances every Friday and Saturday night. Met my wife uh, at the time, Lonnie, and, and uh, we uh, would go to the Fillmore every Friday and have an apple up at the top of the stairs and uh, pay a dollar to get in and see the best. Best musical acts ever on the universe, you know, everything from Jimi Hendrix, this is the Winterland, of course, mm -hmm. also, Jimi Hendrix, uh, uh, Paul, actually, the reason I'm in the music business is because of Paul Butterfield and Blues Band, because I'd go up the stairs one night, and I felt these chills all up and down the back of my spine, mm -hmm. I had training as a child, you know, a little classical, but I never had that expression moment, that's when I knew. When I saw the Paul Butterfield Blues Band on that stage, just playing that great music, and I just knew I want to be there sometime in my life. And believe it or not, and, uh, about five, six years ago with the Cyclops Blues Band, I got on the same stage of the Fillmore Auditorium and played the same song that I heard when I walked up the stairs when I was 18 years old, and it was called The Killing Floor. I remember and, that. Yeah, the killer for it. And there I am on stage pro prophesizing my own uh, place to be. And that was the magic of the 60s. Beautiful. Yeah. Tell me more about your experience in the Haight-Ashbury. Well, um, gosh, experience is the key word. And there was plenty of it, I'm telling you. Um, there was sandalwood, tie-dye, uh, patchouli oil. There was scents in the air. There was a cultural uh, phenomena happening, a crusader of of uh, good good feelings, mm -hmm. uh, of uh, uh, good thoughts, you know, save the world, peace, love, and happiness, and mm -hmm. all those wonderful ideas mm -hmm. that just coalesced right there in the Panhandle and everywhere else we went to see the bands mm -hmm. play because it was an expression of tr uh, truth and purity. What basically. about the BN? What, what about, about the, the BN? BN? I went to the BN. It was a little too crowded for me, <laughs> <laughs> but I enjoyed going to the BNs and all those things where you just saw people coming together to say human beings are better than what has always happened in the world. Right. You know, pestilence, plagues, wars, uh, famine, all the all the garbage. Right. So there, there was better ways of presenting oneself in the, as a human being, and that was the BN. Right. Were you here for the death of the hippie? The death in the 1968, 1970s, 1970s. I think that was 68 or 69, actually. Yeah. And right. they had the coffin going down the street and to the uh, park. Meaning that the flower the children, baby. all of that was vanishing species. It no longer existed. Exactly, which overdone. we know isn't true. You can count that on a 1963 Kennedy assassination, 1968 Bobby Kennedy and, right. and Martin Luther King. Of course, things got a little gloomy. And uh, all of the profiteers came in with the drug scene and all made their mm -hmm. money on the side, and things got bad. The idealism was gone, but not the spirit. Right. Because exactly. I still got it. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I also hear you dabble in other things besides playing music. Well, I do. I don't know. I, I'm pretty much consumed by music because okay. I, I grew up with Gregory of Sly Stone's family drummer. Right. And I've been, you know, him and I had done production with Lee Oscar from the group War, and mm -hmm. that was many years ago. But mm -hmm. uh, I, I, music's a hard one to kick because mm -hmm. basically that was the half ingredient mm -hmm. of the renaissance of the era we're talking about. Exactly. And so it's been always a hard one for me to kick, and I've always mm -hmm. loved it. And so as to other things, right now I'm just taking my mother's art, she was a ceramics art teacher, and taking her paintings and making them, you know, I'm doing other art things. Uh -huh. know, but basically there's nothing much to do except write poetry, which I have one of, Beautiful. in my best pocket. May I? You may. May I read this? I wrote this a while back, about this era. Let me see, how, you know, this is somebody else's poem. Okay. How did that get in my pocket? All right, here it is. Okay, this is called Blowing in the Wind. 
obviously relating to a great poet songwriter himself. Exactly. Summer of love, we were blowing in the wind. Long hair, black lamp, incense, patchouli oil, day glow paints, tie dye shirts, love beads, and weed drilling your nostrils with THC. Free bands in the panhandle, love ends, b ends, and sit ins. We were changing all the time. We were blowing in the wind. Mind altering, sugar cubes laced with purple Osley, making stained glass windows in your mind, spelling out Lucy in the sky with diamonds all the time. The church of all mankind was forming. Sometimes I feel like going back in time to turn on, tune in, drop out. We were changing all the time. We were blowing in the wind. One last verse. Unchained and free in love, we shook the world and the world shook us. Two Kennedys, one Martin Luther King, and a partridge in a pear tree. That was a little side. Thousands and thousands of brothers and sisters marching for peace for those who would never march again. It was a crime against the Bobby Soxers and the cool, cool dudes with their pompadour and 57 Chevys that drove to the levee, and most of all, to their children, their flower children of peace, love, and happiness. And brother, have you got a place I can crash? We were changing all the time. We were blowing in the wind. We were hip to the trip of the light show trip at the Fillmore Auditorium. See you in the next world. Don't be late. Excuse me while I kiss the sky. And when you get there, light my fire, light my fire. And you, and you know I want to take you higher and higher. All we need is love. Beautiful. That's you right. should put this to music. Well, that's true. I've done a lot of stuff with poetry and put it to music, but that one kind of stands alone. Great. But anyway, it kind of, kind of sums up the, the feeling and the ambiance of those times. It was really wonderful, and I thank everything in the spiritual universe that it happened to me. And I was there. It was really great. Was and we really thank great. you, Herman. Thank you. And any last words before we end this? Well, uh, like I said, if I was able to invent a time machine, mm -hmm. I think all children of today should experience the good side of, of what we're talking about and how it really was in terms of its feeling amongst each other, how expressive we were, how we dressed almost like nature, flowers in the hair, uh, day glow paints, patchouli oil, and all those uh, tie-dye colors that express everything that's in nature. Mm -hmm. It was really quite peaceful and loving, caring, and great. That's about it. That don't wrap it up, I don't know what that. But anyway, that, that was... Uh, that was um, what I got of it. And they should be able to, if I had a time machine, I, I go back question. and experience it. I'm curious if you, have, if you have any opinion of the artwork of the time, uh, the posters that I were the posters. on the walls, you couldn't read them. Um, what, what about the community of people and the, um, the community of the music family when, when, during the 60s? And what was happening here, in your opinion, in the Haight-Ashbury? It was not really happening. It was little bits happening all over the world, but nothing like was it what was exploding here. Well, what, dis what I can see out of it and describe is the fact that it was a tribal emergence. It was an emergence of a, a of, you know how our ancestral types, our archetypes go back all the way to the primitive times, and you see villages and little tribes and stuff like that, and they have their little ceremonies, and they have their little uh, rituals, and they have their... Uh, their uh, spiritual moments. Well, basically, it was an emergence in modern times of a tribal situation, of a tribal uh, feeling amongst people, of a brethren, of a, a feeling of uh, community, of hope, of everlasting peace. It was uh, it was a flower. It was a bud that turned into a flower, exactly of uh, those times, and it was really actually going away from technology, going away from the way things are mechanically, it was going more to the soul, more to the heart, more to the reality of what is inside of human beings and the, on, the, on the good side. And that means just, it, it was, it was a great party. It was a great feeling. It was a great unplanned plan, if you know what I mean. Exactly. It was a great unplanned plan. It had, it had, it really had merit. It had, uh, it had great uh, substance. And too bad, it's in pockets now all over the world, but it still exists. And the San Francisco explosion was really grandiose. It was magnified by press, media, 
and it spread all over. And at that time, it was the way to go. And it was just going back to huts and villages and campfires and sing-alongs. It was really quite simple and profound at the same time. How do you feel about the young people that gather and run to the hate today? Well, they don't know. <laughs> they don't know what they're running to. See, we, we didn't, we, we kind of knew what we were doing. We kind of knew we wanted to go there for the feeling of uh, camaraderie and, and, and togetherness and dance and meet. You know, men meet women, meet women, you know, all that. At that time, we were all young and vibrant. So it was uh, a great place to meet people and, and, and start stories, share stories, share ideas, keep the idealism going. It was, I don't think that's what's, where it's at today in the youth. They don't have that opportunity because they're so infused with uh, uh, these uh, televisions and games and, 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 and it, there's too much technology and computerization in their world to make them understand the grassroots of what I'm talking about. Does that make sense? Makes sense to me. Well, thank you so very much. And thank you, and you look wonderful for somebody who graduated in 1965. Well, hey, don't spread this, don't spread it around.